Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this video which you may have already seen posted a couple of days ago. Uh, we did upload this video, uh, our top 10 worst builds of all time, uh, and it was live for about 12 hours and then we ran into some copyright snags. Uh, copyright basically means uh, any of those little clips that we used of our trucks and different things like that, that we didn't film ourselves, technically didn't belong to us, they belong to somebody else. There's like automatic softwares um, that go out there and basically scan every video on the internet to figure out whether copyrighted information is being used. Now we use these clips because we feel like they probably fell under like the Fair Use Act, which means that um, you can repurpose uh, copyrighted information under a certain guy, certain guidelines. Um, however, rather than putting up a fight and going through like the appeal process and saying, oh no, we can use that, we can use that, it's so much easier for us, us just to remove some of those clips and replace them with some of our own clips. In fact, this video it's pretty much the exact same video that we posted before. It's just some of the clips of the vehicles are clips that literally came from my phone, from our cameras, from our mechanics phones and cameras. So it's more raw, it's more real, it's more unpolished, which believe it or not, that's what YouTube loves. That's what I love. Um, and that's the reason why I've been doing so much YouTube lately because I love being able to show the real um, raw unpolished side of our business which is exactly what you're getting, and you're getting more of that now in this video. So along with replacing some of those copyrighted clips with different clips that we know are gonna have copyright issues, we also changed a little spot in the beginning where the muscle kind of ranted a little bit about uh, some of his, uh, well, some of our, our, our quirky parts of our relationship with the network that our TV show's on and the producers of our show. Now you have to understand, we have an amazing relationship with the network and our producers, and a lot of the stuff that we were saying was just flat out jokes and we give each other uh, a hard time about that kind of stuff all the time um, however there was a small group of viewers in the YouTube community who watched that and took it very seriously and there was a lot of hate being thrown at the network and our producers and uh, that's not what I want that was not the purpose in fact the network and the producers are our partners we have a great working relationship with them and so to see people attacking them it was like oh wait nope you must have misunderstood what we were doing here um, this was not us trying to start a mutiny against our business partners. Does that make sense? So based off of that, rather than trying to explain and rather than trying to moderate comments and, and have to go in and deal with all that, just remove that section of it. Because like I said, we have an amazing relationship with our TV show partners. Um, I will tell you, and I can easily, you know, I can, I can gladly tell you that what we do here on YouTube is definitely more um, raw it's more of like the nitty gritty day to day stuff. Uh, and some of the stuff that we do here on YouTube doesn't fit the TV show format because TV show format, you gotta realize, in order to make an hour of TV, you have 42 minutes because you gotta factor in the commercials, right? So 42 minutes, you have to tell this like killer story. You have to show the builds. You have to like, it's actually really tricky to create a TV show um, that flows and is easy to watch. That's why what we do on YouTube is literally just, hey, Here's everything, enjoy it, um, take it how you will. Whereas on the TV show, they have to say, okay, this is got perfect, 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 polish it up, bam. Two totally different formats, both of them work really well. Our show's received tremendous ratings. We're currently filming a new season of our show, uh, which will be coming out uh, pretty soon here. Can't give you the exact dates. But uh, like I said, what you're about to watch in this video is the same thing that we recorded and released a couple of days ago. We just made a couple of fixes to it. A, so that we didn't have to deal with copyright stuff. B, so that people weren't hating on our partners because these people are our friends. We do not want to generate hate towards our friends. That's just kind of crazy. So anyways, guys, with that said, enjoy the show. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to sit down and tell you about all the mistakes we've ever made. No, just the top 10. Yeah. We're going to give you the top 10 list of our least favorite builds of all time. Hold on, hold on. Are they mistakes if we learn from them and... You're right, they're mistakes. Yeah, they're absolutely still they're mistakes, mistakes, even if we did learn from them. Mm -hmm. Trust me, some of these are definitely gonna surprise you. There's a number of different reasons why they're our least favorite builds. Some of them were actually really cool builds, but the reason we didn't like them was because they were terrible business decisions or we had bad experiences Whatever. with them. Whatever it is, we're gonna give you our list. We're gonna get right into it with number 10. Number 10 on our list of least favorite builds. You ready for this? I'm gonna go first, you okay right. with that? All right. The Mini Mega Ram. Oh. Now let me start off by saying, it looked pretty cool. And it was cool to drive. And it was a decent idea. 
here's where we went wrong. A, the eco diesel motor is a huge letdown. Huge letdown. A 1500 diesel just isn't the same thing as a three quarter ton or one ton. And the fact that the mini Mega Ram had really big shoes to fill with the original Mega Ram, yeah. really the only similarities was the color of the paint and the front fenders. Yeah, that was about it. And I mean, there, I know there's a lot of people who liked those trucks and you probably liked those trucks so you could do two things, drive a truck and get good fuel mileage. Right. But that was it. There was nothing else about that But once that you put truck. big tires on that truck, your fuel mileage went out the, window. out the window. Also, if you've ever tried pulling a trailer with an eco diesel, I tried pulling my boat to the lake once. I was there. That was terrifying. It was terrifying. Not a great experience. So all in all, the eco diesel, and I don't want to hurt anybody's feeling who has this truck because if it's a bone stock truck and you're driving it around as kind of like a commuter, it's a decent truck. But if you bought the eco diesel Ram 1500 to be a diesel truck, you probably have been just about as let down as we were. Okay. And then we put 40s on. Okay, I, I am gonna come in with the excuse here though. We messed up because we did put 40s on it. Mm -hmm. And I don't even really put 40s on my full size trucks. We I only used do to put 40s on everything. We though. used to put, yeah. All I'm saying is, is maybe to, to give those people who are watching, they're like, God, these guys are stupid. Maybe don't do 40s, do 37s. That that truck was a letdown, though. 37s on a on a 1500 are still gonna still piss you off. Yeah, they are. They are. So, You're gonna want to stick to 35s. That's number 10. Look, it gets worse from there. Number 10 is like the best worst. Did you it, say the best worst? Yes, it's the best of the worst. Okay. And as we move down the list, we're gonna get to the worst of the worst and the builds that we had the least, like great experiences with, which brings us to number nine. So when we started this, and I, he said, hey, we got to tell everybody what our least favorites are. My number one, my first reaction I almost was, need to go like this. I, I know, he's not happy. The first tow truck that we built. Now, hold on, because a lot of you are like, these son of a Do you guys remember the first tow truck? It was the Kenworth. We converted over four-wheel drive, put yeah. it on military axles, wrapped four -wheel it. Four-wheel drive. I mean, it was cool, but I have like two best friends, all right? There was only three seats in there. It was smaller than what we're sitting on right now. So guess what? Diesel Dave had to sit in the middle. Now I love that guy, but he smells. So you put me in a, in a, in a small vehicle to, I mean, and when we're pulling things, it's not like it's two minutes away. It's always an hour or two. We put Diesel Dave in the middle. It was just too close. That's my only complaint. It's only number nine. I know he's upset. I love the way it looked. That truck did some really cool stuff. It went down and recovered Jimbo. Yes. Remember? I do remember that. However, I will agree, it, after we converted it to what it was, it became very impractical. Unpractical? Un impractical. 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 Impractical to That's drive anywhere like other it. than off-road. It did great off-road, but if you had to go down the freeway, driving down the freeway in a four-wheel drive tow truck on military tires, not ideal, especially, especially, especially since that truck had a Cat C7 did engine. Did we re-gear that? No. Oh, See, no, no, we did, we did, because it had the MRAP axles. Oh, but yeah. But still, it this just, truck had a C7 Cat engine, which is like maybe 300 horsepower on a good day. It wasn't and it's enough. always had like a seven-speed transmission. It basically, it was just, it was not the right truck my, for the job. My last complaint, and actually we fixed it in, in our next tow truck, is it was so damn loud yeah. in that thing. Yeah. You had to wear headphones to communicate. Yeah. So you were sitting right next to your buddy, but you had to wear headphones. So I loved the tow truck idea. I thought the tow truck was cool. It wasn't practical and it was too loud. That's why it's number nine. So it went to a good home though. I think it, it, we sold it to somebody in Texas or Oklahoma. They probably love it. And they love it. They a use one it all the time. Man, like a, man, a little man local, works. a little a little local tow yeah. operation. They love it. And it's a great show piece. People who see that truck like, ah, oh, you know, I want one that tow works. company to come get me. So mm -hmm. anyways, agree to disagree on that one. Some of you love it. I loved it because it, it, look at the footage. I mean, this thing was awesome. All right. It's number nine. Chill out. Number eight. This one is number eight because again, it was a tremendous letdown of expectations. The Nissan Titan with the coming. Oh, oh man. <laughs> this one was number eight because it was a tremendous letdown of expectations. The Nissan Titan with the Cummins engine. Okay, and there's a reason that it's number eight instead of number 10. It was more of a letdown than the Mini Mega Ram. Yeah. It really was. When we heard that Nissan was getting a diesel engine and then we heard it was a Cummins. So stoked. The whole world went nuts. A new Cummins, a V8 Cummins, a five liter sequential turbo Cummins. Like this thing is gonna rip. And it did everything but rip. It really did. It uh, Again, this is a truck that in bone stock configuration, 
I drove I drove both the Eco Diesel 1500 and the Titan Cummins stock for a good five, six, seven thousand miles, and I didn't mind driving them bone stock. They were okay, but the minute we modified them, especially the Titan, we did 37s. Yeah, we did a six inch lift. Yeah, we did. It was a giveaway it. truck. We didn't regear it. We didn't regear it. it. We put Baja fenders on it. We did the we did, did the lift. We did snow tracks we on it. We put tracks on it, which was kind of cool. That was the only cool thing about it. But do you remember when we tried pulling a trailer with it? It has a gooseneck hitch from the factory. We hooked our gooseneck trailer and one of our trucks and towed it. I literally thought the truck was gonna break in half. I thought we were gonna die. We did one of these all the way. And that's not even normal with a gooseneck trailer. You yeah. don't do this yeah. with a gooseneck. That's why they're gooseneck. The reason why that Cummins V8 engine was not my favorite is because it was built in an era of DPF and filter everything. It was like Cummins' new way of saying, hey, we can build a super clean running, efficient, diesel engine and it just sucked it was it was had no throttle response the frame was too narrow no that's power. why you were kind of all over the place it did get better when we put wider wheels on it but it's still no power frame was tiny no aftermarket support for that truck either no none of the I mean, like very few companies were like oh hey you know well, let's build parts for that thing very very limited options when it came to accessories, bumpers, lifts, wheels, that yeah. kind of stuff. In fact, we had to wait forever for anybody to even make a lift for it before we could lift it. And we did a lot of customizing on the parts that we got because yeah. they weren't necessarily made the right ones. for that truck. Yeah. And to be fair, the reason we did it is because there was such a big hype. Right. I mean, everybody was like, Nissan coming, boom, boom. I bought one of the first trucks in the state. And it was a V8, right? V8 five and liter. And for those of you who aren't familiar with trucks, Cummins has always been a straight six. So for them to come out with this V8 thing, all of us were like, holy <laughs> going from six cylinders to eight, I'm in. This was supposed to be crazy cool. And it Huge was a letdown. letdown. Huge letdown. Also, guys, listen, I need you to do one thing for me right now. One thing. You realize that we're sitting in my airplane hangar right now. My airplane hangar is full of all sorts of cool toys, Polaris vehicles, all kinds of stuff. And did you know that if you subscribe to this channel, literally just hit that subscribe button, then you're automatically entered to win one of my toys. You actually get to come here and yeah. pick out one of his toys. And I'm telling you from firsthand, there's a lot of toys here and I don't know anyone in the whole world that wouldn't pick one of these toys. Yeah. We've already had two winners at 250,000. We found a winner. 500,000 subscribers, we got a winner. Now. We are well on our way to 750,000 subscribers. And when we hit 750, bam, one of you lucky subscribers is gonna get your name pulled out of the hat and I'm gonna let you have free reign, pick one of my vehicles. Yeah, You're lucky. Guys, every 250,000 subscribers we hit, we're doing it. So if you subscribed and you didn't win, well, guess what? You still have a lot more chances because we're doing this all the way to 10 million subscribers. So I hate to sit here and beg you to subscribe, but hopefully this motivates you to subscribe and I don't have to beg you. I will beg, but not in this video. No, later on another vlog titled yeah please subscribe please please oh, come on come on we need it help us next on the list number seven now this one and just so you guys know i didn't even know how he numbered these but this was one of my i would say my second after the tow truck because what did we call that the rock crawler the, it was named something in the episode you guys remember we got the rock crawler it looked like a rock bouncer because of the way the whole entire thing was put together. It had a Dodge Viper motor in it and was supposed to rip. And it was on what, 53s? Yeah. It was on Baja. On Swampers, I think. Swamper 53s. And it had been re-geared from what we were told because it was on, it had MRAPs on it. It had MRAP backs with it. So here's the thing about that build. My buddy bought it on eBay sight unseen and shipped it straight to our shop. And bought it for a good amount of money. Yeah, he paid he paid a decent amount for it. But on paper, it's a great build. It's got some solid parts. It's really unique looking. And you guys probably, if you watched the episode, thought it was cool. If you see pictures of it right now, like all these pictures you're seeing of it, this thing looks unreal. Yeah. The issue is it's grossly underpowered. It's a decent build. Whoever built this thing, I think it was built up in Canada, did a cool job with all the cage work. It's a little excessive, um, but it's got really nice shocks, really nice axles, cage really nice work. transfer cases. The cage work is insane, but they put a Dodge Viper engine in it that you would think Dodge Viper V10, tons of power, the exact opposite. It is so under, it literally feels like a lawnmower. Okay, engine. and to be fair, we actually checked compression. Yeah. And like, it's a it wasn't just like a blown up Dodge Viper motor. It was fully yeah. 
there. It wasn't the right engine for that. I, I think the torque converter, the transmission combo, everything about it just wasn't fit for that heavy of a vehicle. I mean, that thing probably weighs 15, 12, 13, 14,000 pounds. I mean, it's, it's heavy for sure. Yeah. It's all cage all suspension, all tire. You'll see when we took it out, we went out to a local rock crawling course and oh. uh, we were literally like, there's no good shots of it crawling because as soon as you pull up to a rock, like a rock crawler, when you pull up to a rock, you're supposed to be able to give it gas and it crawls up on it. Yeah. This, you pull up to a rock and it just goes Burr. It was embarrassing. We have to hit things hell. with like a little bit of speed. So the reveal is terrible. It looks like we're rock crawling, but really we're just hauling and trying to bounce off Going down stuff. a hill. We still have it. My buddy still has it sitting at my shop. Um, he does have a really nice Duramax built by Waggler Performance that's sitting in our shop. We just haven't had time to get around to putting the two together because honestly, we've all had such a kind and, of a bad experience with it. Yeah, but when that Duramax goes in, if it does, that comes way off this list. Oh yeah, that goes to the closer to the top of the top 10. Yeah, that that will be absolutely insane. I wish list. we would have had more time to actually do the diesel swap in it and give it more power because yeah. that thing is, I hate that it even made it onto this list of top 10 worst builds, but the way that it performs right now, it doesn't belong anywhere else. No. All right, guys, number six. Number six is one that, again, my top you know, five here or so in the top 10 are all because they're wasted potential. They're all builds that had really high potential that ended up not living up to it. And this one is the Expedition Man Camper. Oh. This is a build that uh, my buddy from an insurance company called me and he's like, hey, I insured this camper. It got in a wreck. Uh, do you want to buy it from me? I saw the pictures. And I was like, hell yeah, this thing's awesome. All I saw was pictures though, because it was located in California. So I paid him for it and they shipped it out to the shop. And as soon as I got here, I realized that, I realized two things. A, this thing has got some really, really, really high-end, rare, valuable components, like the, the camper on it. Wait, hold on. How much was it brand new? Tell them how much it was. Oh, this thing brand new is probably 375 grand. Yeah, this is a no so joke. So the man truck is a European semi-truck. It's like the Kenworth of Europe. Yeah. Um, and then the camper body on this was made by Sportmobile, maybe? It was, no, Action Mobile. It was made by some German overland camper company. Germans and Europeans, when it comes to building stuff like that, they, they go hard are dialed yeah. like this thing was so sick so like such a good use of space the camper we didn't even know okay when we bought this thing i didn't even know that the whole camper popped up like seven feet yeah we found that out after it got here like we pump a little ram was like, that was a huge surprise so we're like hell yeah now here's the bad part we got digging into the damage from the accident and found that the man truck the front of it had been hit so hard that it cracked the engine block, yep. cracked the transmission, cracked the transfer case, destroyed the front axle. Basically, All the entire drivetrain was destroyed was wiped out. And here's the thing: if it was an American truck, we probably could have gone out to the salvage yard and bought an engine, bought a transmission, and dropped it in there. But we started pricing out engines from man from Germany, from Germany, oh. searching parts yards in Europe. And first of all, the cheapest engine we found was like a 15, $20,000 used engine. No, 15, 20,000 euro, which is like $25,000. Then we had to ship it here. And that was just the engine. And then we had to figure from, out, oh yeah, no. it was unreal. So then we had to figure out transmission, out. transfer case. So by the time we looked at the repair bill on this thing, it was like 50 grand minimum just to get it, the engine and the drivetrain back in. And then we didn't know if there was any other additional problems with the camper unit or any of that stuff. So we've got this thing that's worth potentially three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars but we got to put 50 grand into it to maybe get it right to maybe sell plus it. the money that we spent on it yeah. plus it has a salvage title now so it's like ah what do you do i didn't want to dump 50 grand into it so it was like one of the most painful things i ever had to do sell it as is that sucked because i wanted to pull the camper body off put it on a different chassis i wanted to put a different maybe a cummins in it i he, i had all these different ideas yeah he had a hard time so much so that at one point i watched him have a full-on conversation with himself about how he had to talk himself out of doing what he wanted to do which was spend the 50 grand to get it to where he wanted that's why it's got to be on the list because it made me schizophrenic yeah i mean he was having conversations with himself about, yes. at one point i think you cried and then you consoled yourself i did i don't know it was that's why it's on the list that's why it's number six yeah number moving six. on to number five on the list of builds that we absolutely hated you guys ready for this yeah it's the vruck you heard me right yeah the vruck it was a van truck idea because it never even came it exactly. never even came. And to be fair, 
I mean, we kind of got some of it, right? We did the doors. We did the bro, body. Bro, I spent 20 grand oh, on man. that conversion. $20,000. At what point did you see that and go, this is not it? The rock is, is still in the on same. top of a container where we put it back in 2017 and said, I never want to see you again. It was going to be a dually too, wasn't it? Bro, that truck was going to be a six by six, that Brock, that van truck. Here's what we did. We took a Chevy Kodiak yes. and we took a Chevy Express van. Both of those vehicles have the same body lines. In fact, the Kodiaks, the original Kodiaks were built off of the van body. Put them together. Put them together. What do you know? You got a Kodiak with like five rows of seats. And a Kodiak is a truck. Here's something about that build that you guys should know. It still haunts me on a daily basis. And I still, I've got so much money invested in it that I might actually finish it at some point. Oh, we'll finish it. When everything goes and we go bankrupt, it'll be him and I out that, there just working on it. You and I just rucking around? Just rucking. And it'll be a dually, but the wheels will be mismatched. We'll have no tools, no building, no, no resources. No, no, Jim will have taken all of our stuff. We're doing it in the parking lot of your trailer park. Yes, yes. <laughs> and like we've dug a, a dirt pit underneath because we're going to be under there for a while. And we're trying to trade. And at that point, that's when you'll see us trying to get a new episode of something and we're driving around in a truck. We're trying to trade autographed pictures of ourselves from the glory days for parts. Yes, and it will work. Guys, the truck, it might make a comeback because it could be a Kodiak limo truck van, four wheel drive monster machine with like seven rows of seats. Maybe, you know what? We might finish that. Why don't we bring that back for another episode? The same reason we didn't finish it on the first episode. Which was? It's a ton of work. Yeah, but everything we do is a I work. know, but we're trying to get away from that. Don't say it. Don't Shop say it. staff is really hard, hard to have. Yeah. Hold on. I want you to look them in the eyes and tell them you're going to finish the brook. I'm not going to the next. No, look them in the eyes and tell them. If you don't and we go bankrupt, I'm not going to have enough faith in you. Before I die, I will do something with the Brook. Okay, that's all I want. Something. That's all I want. We should do a vlog episode. Honestly, I we should don't know turn the why Vruck. I'm not in Monster Jam driving We a should turn the Vruck into a Vroat. A what? A truck van boat. Let's put it on a houseboat. Hold on. You just went from it was too hard to make a Vruck. Now and we're now, going the next step to No. This is why we have so many It's fills. way easier to make something See how float this works? than it is to make it drive. ADHD and it's gone. The Vruck. I need to be in Monster Jam in the Vruck. You want to drive the I want to be the one. Do you know how many moms, soccer moms, will be a fan of me if I show up in a Vruck? Look, you've already got a lot of repentance to do with the soccer mom world okay I, that's true <laughs> this is how i redeem myself oh boy you know what the it's we're not gonna over we're gonna for, we're it's not over for the we're gonna let the vruck simmer for now and move on to number four this oh. truck made me diesel dave and our entire shop look like a bunch of idiots don't leave me out because you guys were in there in in there racing i was on the sidelines listening to people laugh they started throwing tomatoes at me <laughs> uncle donnie here's just a recap for you uncle donnie my buddy calls me says hey we got this race truck the mint 400 just called they want us to come down and race do you guys want to finish this uh old ford race truck that i'm working on we'll take it down and race in the desert i'm thinking how hard can it be right like whatever it's just it's almost done all we gotta do is just finish it up same exact conversation he has with every build we've ever done we pull it into the shop and we're like all right let's get this thing going so what we found was um, Uncle Donnie had been working on this thing by himself in his shop, and he'd done a really for 20 or 30 years great job um, for what he could do with his limited tools and stuff. But we found a lot of stuff that needed to be um, updated. Um, I, and this is not a this is not dogging on Uncle Donnie. Uncle Donnie's Uncle like Donnie's literally great. like one. He's like my brother, uncle, dad. He's, That's why we call him Uncle Donnie. Uncle Donnie is a dude that I bought a race truck from years ago, and we just became buddies. And he's become almost like a dad to me. Um, Uncle now Donnie he sells office copiers. No, Uncle Donnie's got his own off-road shop now. Oh. He got out of the copier business, and he's building trucks. He's doing a good job. Good for but him. But this F100 came from Uncle Donnie's garage, which had limited resources to our shop, and we had. No joke, not just TV time. Sometimes on TV, we're like, oh, we only got a week to do it. And we really got like five weeks or as long as we need. This one was legit. We only have a week to do it because the Mint 400 race was coming up. We pulled it in. This is when I hired Aaron. You guys remember Aaron um, from the shop? Clover neck tattoo. 
Love Aaron, super talented, like one of the smartest assholes I've ever met in my entire life. And he knows that he's an a dude. Um, he came in from California one day uh, because he was bringing us some parts that he wanted to sponsor for the build from his little company down in California. He came, worked like seven days nonstop on this build without sleeping. Cigarettes and Mountain Dew. Yeah, and never actually after this build, never left. He just stayed here and worked for us. And now yeah. he's got another sh uh, fab shop going. I love Aaron. We gave that build our all. We tried really hard. We put so much time and effort into it. We were swapping the motor out like, six hours before the race Twice. the night before we think we're dialed we roll up to the start line we're looking cool paint job is ticking. hold on time out time out if for anybody anybody who has ever built anything from the ground up everybody knows you do one thing r d get it out and actually race it before the actual race, race right you go test it yeah do you it. test it now all you guys are like why didn't they test it he, we really did have one week so race day was test day too we rolled it out of the shop we, we used welder up shop down in vegas because the engine blew up last minute thank you steve we rolled it from his shop to the start line of the race with zero testing miles on it but it looked awesome everybody was stoked me and diesel dave were stoked in our race suits in our gear all geared up cameras in position tears in my eyes freaking they dropped the flag we take off we're hauling and we make it a solid 100 yards before the truck just grenades. Boom! We hit a jump, driveline angles were off, it sheared off the drive shaft, <laughs> gone. Just completely stopped the whole world. It's, it broke right in front of the only part of a desert race where a crowd actually sits. The crowd started throwing tomatoes at me. Everybody was like laughing, making fun of us. We looked like idiots. This was being filmed for an episode of the show. It was literally just the absolute worst. Heavy D says, let's get out, let's get it back, let's fix it, let's get back to the race. So what do we do? And you guys watch, because you saw the episode, scrambling to get everything we could to get the drive lines fixed. Got the drive lines fixed. Which we did, and I will say this, there was a lot of craziness to get a drive line fixed, because drive lines you don't just cut and throw back in. We did do we were, that. We were welding right there in yeah. the pits, like making no our balancing, drive line parts. No balancing. We got it fixed. We get back out on the track, we're all loving life, make it about seven miles, and all of a sudden I lose all power. I'm like, what is going on? Well, an individual who had helped us put the engine in, I won't name names because I don't want to give him that respect because this person's just a bag. An individual who claimed to be an engine expert put the harmonic balancer on the engine the night before and didn't torque it down. He might not have even done any sort of procedure to make sure the bolts were tight. Mm -hmm. And the harmonic balancer on the front of the engine flew off. We lost the whole belt system, drive system, everything, gonzo, game over. And that was the end of our race. Very, very rarely do you not speak to me. Yeah. Very rarely. We have a very open relationship. Yeah. Not in the sense of what you guys are thinking. Not that way. He was so upset, he didn't speak to anybody. No. And I went in, tried to talk to him. He was so pissed off because the idea was there. Everything was there. Everything it was lack was of, or I should say laziness. Whatever it was, lack of skill, And laziness, he was pissed oversight. about that. And we looked stupid. Everybody there thought we were a joke, which the reality is we don't give a <laughs> what people think. But we do want people to know we did build something from the ground up. It took us a week. No r and Blew up right out of the gates. Got in. Seven miles is not that bad. No. No, it could have been worse. It but could, that's we could why, have not made it. That's why this is on the list as number four. But it's also when we do the next video where we talk about our top 10 favorite builds, it's also going to be on the list of top 10 favorite because over the last two years, we took and we dialed that truck in. R Aaron, I said, Aaron, make this thing just tits. Make it the bee's knees. And he did. He did. And you saw where we raced against uh, Todd LaDuke out in the desert and we beat him. That F100 is now a bad race truck mm -hmm. and I still own it and I'm proud of it and you'll probably see more of it here in the future. But uh, the first the first go at it was depressing, to say the very least. It was an embarrassment. Yeah. That's why it's on this list, right? Numero three is... Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. I have had more questions about this vehicle than anything else in my DMs. And that is when we took the excursion that you guys remember, my excursion. Family excursion. He, my family excursion. I'm going to get teary. Yeah, don't. I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to so keep it together. Cry. I'm going to keep it together. Took it and was promised by this guy that yeah. we were going to make it into a SEMA build, but we were going to do it as a Bronco. The SEMA excursion cut in half to be the Bronco. Now we have a rendering of that somewhere. Where we do have a rendering like. of it. We do. And it was a sick rendering and everything looked sick. And the reality <laughs> is, is it is still sick in my mind. Yeah. But there was a huge, huge, huge concern. 
which is a valid concern. It was so short that the, the way that we had it, we couldn't figure out the drive lines and the powertrain, and we scrapped it. And the body lines. There was a lot of struggles with that build, and it was going to be a big SEMA build. So as we were cruising along, we probably would have pushed that build through the finish line, but we had a client that was we were actually building it for, and that person was very uh, difficult to work with. And they had some expectations that we weren't going to be able to meet, and I realized that early on. And when you're dealing with a client who's spending a couple hundred thousand dollars on a truck, you got to like make sure that you're on the same page. And I knew that we weren't going to be on the same page, and so I was just like, you know what? We've already spent. We 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 chopped up a six, seven power stroke. We chopped up your excursion. We put a solid three, 400 hours of labor into it. And then we realized that the body lines weren't gonna match up. Um, the Remember drive the train, the, 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 the back of the transmission and the, the transfer case literally was almost to sitting where axle. we needed the rear axle yeah. to be. So there was like no drive line. So we had no suspension travel. So all things that we probably could have worked through, but we just didn't have the time or the money or the resources or the desire. And so, you guys are going to love the footage of how this one is currently sitting because it's sitting in the back of a Connex box in our back lot in pieces. And I get asked about it all the time. I get asked about um, it all the time. Pace, who worked for us for a long time, good buddy of ours, he asked me about it all the time because he was the lead fab guy on it. And um, it did killer. Yeah, it, it has awesome. a lot of great work in it. He was, it he was super bummed when we pulled the plug because it could have been really cool. But the problem was it was we were spending too much money to build something that was just not ever going to work very shoot. well yeah. so number three excursion conversion, conversion bronco. bronco that sounds like a sounds like a mexican country band it is it is mariachi yeah number two on the list of our least favorite builds of all time is hold on hold on this is one that i got to talk about okay before he talks about it though i want it to be said that this thing looks bad i'm just saying that right now this build was one of the worst financial decisions I ever made in my life ever. And he makes a lot of bad financial decisions. The Duramax C10. Built this truck for my good buddy Cheyenne Lord. Cheyenne is awesome. He came to us and said, yeah, I want a Duramax C10. And um, what he asked for was something that we could have easily built. But the problem was, at that time, we had people working in our shop who had different ideas of what this thing should actually become. We also ran into issues with the old frame not being right. Like, there's a lot of parts and pieces that you could just build a, a lowered C10, no big deal. The issue became when we decided to build a full tube chassis for it. And then we decided to- Not by, no, hold on, not just by choice, because we got the truck, thought the truck would work as is, and then we had we realized like we we're gonna have to be doing this from the ground up. And I think you had already quoted him a price and by that point, that's but when it became- Here's 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 what I agreed to. I think I, I agreed to build that truck for 125 grand. Um, originally, with all the parts and everything, uh, Cheyenne supplied the donor truck, which is an old C10. Couldn't have been more than five grand, 10 grand. Yeah. So we got to 70, 60% uh, completion mark mm -hmm. and I had already spent 125 grand and so i kind of told cheyenne i'm like hey man um this is where we're at and he's like well i don't really i don't really have they don't really have a budget to throw more money at it i think he might have thrown a little bit more like 10 or 15 grand i can't remember the details but i was like well i'm already committed we're already building this thing i can't not deliver it we've already spent the money and i gotta i gotta fulfill the delivery so we continued to move forward with it and we were doing it on the show well it was our first ever three episode build it spanned three different episodes because it was so gnarly so intense so in depth we brought in different fabricators different guys from all over the country super talented really really great fab guys um Pinstriper. angle brothers uh, cold hard art um uh, they, they're going to be so pissed because I can't remember all their names. Um, we did a pinstriper, right? Ronzoni came in a pinstriper. We had like some of the most talented people from all over the, the country come in and help us build this truck, which is awesome until you have to pay those people. So in just outside labor, we probably went over budget by a solid thirty dollars or $40,000. And then we just continued to go ham on this thing. Like literally it was perfect guys. The C10 was perfect. It was the most perfect C10 you've ever seen. It had some issues with like the transmission tuning and some stuff after the fact that obviously any truck as you shake it down, you're gonna have issues. But overall, full tube chassis, cantilever rear suspension, Duramax, full custom interior, custom sheet metal panels. Every, there like wasn't really anything C10 left about 1, this. 1100 horsepower. Other motor. than the cab. So then we deliver it to the client. He's stoked. I'm into the build, 200 grand. Maybe more. Customer paid 120, 130. So I'm negative 
60, 70 grand on this build. And uh, I just had to eat that. And then after the fact, the C10 went to an auction. Um, the owner went to go sell it and I don't blame him because it was a super valuable build. He took it to a Barrett Jackson auction and it was just not great timing. And the truck sold for like 80 grand. It was like the biggest, like just, and I'm not blaming anybody. I'm not blaming Cheyenne. Cheyenne, we're buddies, the owner. It just was not a great deal for anybody involved. The, the only person that made out well on that build was the person who bought it at the auction for 80 grand. Yeah. Other than that, it was just an absolute Nightmare. mess. Okay. Although it was one of our coolest, cleanest builds ever. And it looked really cool. Yeah. But man, maybe that's something that most people don't understand that there is a lot you bite off when you build anything from the ground up. Here's, here's, you don't really know. And you know how many times I've had people like like Cheyenne say, hey, this is what I want. Here's my budget. And you go, God, I want to build that for you. I want to do it. And then you get halfway through and you're like, oh, man, this is a nightmare. When it comes to building vehicles, you've got three different types of builds. You've got a modification build where you're modifying uh, a an already good vehicle. Mm -hmm. You've got a restoration where you're restoring an old vehicle back to classic good condition. And then you have a resto mod, which is you're restoring an old vehicle and modifying it at the same time. And that becomes an absolute black Nightmare. hole of money. Yeah. Like that's the fastest way to lose money. You don't see us do a lot of classic vehicles on the show because it's it just, it's not affordable. Yeah, it's not, you can't do it. Endless like pit customers, a customer will come in and they'll be like, oh, I got a healthy budget. I got a hundred grand to restore this thing. And we're like, nope, see you later. Not yeah. even happening. Like maybe if you come to us with uh, three or 400 grand, maybe then we'll make some money on it. But yeah. the problem is the expectations between the business and the client are very, 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 very seldom met even though we try our hardest and the customer tries their hardest understanding, you still end up with an old vehicle that's 40, Let, 50 let's, years old. Let's make it, I'll make it really easy. Ford, right? One of the best automobile companies in the world. They spend millions and millions and millions of dollars to create a vehicle. No, no, no. They, they spend just to develop the F-150, just to d develop a new model of F-150 every few years, a billion dollars. Okay. A billion dollars to create an F-150 and someone rolls in and says, I want you to create me a vehicle and my budget's 150 grand. And you want to say yes. And sometimes we do. And that, that C-10 was one of those times. We don't anymore. And yeah, we, we try not to do that anymore. We used to. I mean, if you want to get a resto mod done the right way, just plan on whoever's giving you the quotes to be way, way, way higher than you're expecting. Yeah. If somebody promises they can do it for hundred grand, you're probably going to wind up in a lawsuit with that person because they're going to start building on it. They're going to come to you and say, Hey, I need another hundred grand to finish this thing. Yep. They're going to keep your vehicle. They're going to put a mechanics lien on it and you're going to wind up with a terrible, terrible experience. So just know that you're going to spend a lot of money. Yeah. It's, it's unless you're managing the project, every bit and piece. Yeah. Be very careful with the rest of the mods guys. So, so C10 was number two because it costs, a lot of money. Terrible financial decision. We didn't get the love and respect yeah. that I felt like we deserved for it. No. The episode didn't even rate that well. People no. didn't want to see that for three episodes of TV. I Some didn't. of the people that we had to work with on that build are people that I never want to see ever again. again. Um, and so it was just all around not a great experience. But the truck was cool and the client was cool. I just pulled my phone out to check a text. And you know how your phone, if you have an iPhone, it, it gives you like memories from that day from years ago. No joke. Look at this. For you. On my for you, my phone is giving me... <laughs> a slideshow of me and the muscle over the years. I haven't watched this yet, and we are definitely including this in the video because apparently my it's phone- It's gotta be 10 years old, right? My phone recognizes you. <laughs> grill, look at this. He's holding a grill above his head. That, I think that was like a marketing Is promo. that a headache rack or a grill? That was a grill. Oh, I think man. that was like our first grill we ever built. So he's like, take a picture of me holding it. <laughs> <laughs> what happened in that when I pulled it up and I was like, hey man, will you take a picture of me? <laughs> and you did. It was just for men beard. <laughs> Before we get to number one of our least favorite builds of all time, honorable mention, didn't necessarily make it on the TV show, somehow ended up in our shop and we thought they were good ideas at the time, is the original fail of the year. All right, so the fail of the year you guys saw it was a big Polaris Razor we put on military axles, turned out to be the, like the success of the century. And it was absolutely yeah. a blast in Moab. But what expired that build, expired? It inspired. What really inspired that build words. was the original Can-Am UTV that I had before I ever had a relationship with Polaris. I took this Can-Am UTV up the trail, wasn't even driving it that hard, hit a bump, ripped the entire front axle, the whole front suspension off. I reached out to Can-Am, I was like, hey, this is what happened. Um, thinking about maybe doing a crazy build with this thing to, to repair it, do you guys wanna be involved? And they were like, no. Never. And so originally we were going to build this Can-Am on military axles just to prove the point to the world. Put a picture of it, um, which I'll show you here, 
up on the internet of it sitting on military axles and a local shop, a UTV company, commented and said, this is the absolute fail of the year. I think they reposted it. They were making fun of us. How stupid are you to do this? And so then I was like, well, okay, well, I guess, I guess what I should do is now just double down on this idea because don't tell me I'm stupid and don't tell me I can't do something. Because, because that, even if he is, yeah, then I'll he's going to go harder. And I'll do it. And you, hold on. You know why the, the, they thought it was stupid? Because I'm going to tell everybody who doesn't know. UTVs are driven by a rubber belt, right? Like, and, and for some reason, they hold together really well. But when we talked about putting 50 inch tires on this, and a 53. 53 inch tires on this, and then having it run on a rubber belt, like all UTVs are, everybody said, no way you could do it. So that's when we were like, well, yes, we can. And then you guys saw that the build obviously became a huge success. In fact, we're probably gonna do some vlog content with this soon because it's just sitting over my warehouse. Yeah. Still works perfectly. Number one on our list of least favorite builds of all time is also number one on our list of things that's probably the worst experiences we've ever had, the most humiliated we've ever had, the worst investment we've ever had, the biggest letdown we've ever had, just all together, the worst of the worst of the worst. Absolutely. The call-out challenge, Duramax. And everybody watching this that knows about the call-out challenge, it was probably hoping that that's what it would be. If you don't know what the call-out challenge is, it's basically this event that's put together every year between diesel enthusiasts, where everybody shops from all over the world um, that are well-known get an invite to come participate. And it's a drag race, a sled pull, and a dyno competition. So you take every event that you could possibly use a diesel truck for, and then you score each single event. And at the end, the best truck in all three events added up wins. And you take the smartest people in the diesel performance world, guys like uh, Ryan Milliken, Corey Willis, uh, Firepunk Diesel, all these different shops that know what they're doing yeah they do diesel performance on a daily they basis do nothing but diesel performance and build really really amazing powerful fast trucks it's a cool call out and then you take us <laughs> a bunch of idiots who put military axles on everything yeah. um we had a mechanic working for us at the time chavis still chavis whatever you know he doesn't work for us anymore but i would say that chavis and i are still cordial we're still buddies but he had this single cab duramax that he had, he'd been building over the years and we'd be using it at different events and stuff like that. And when before he us, for industrial injection. Yeah, before us, he worked at a diesel. Yeah, and it was a good shop. running truck. But then when the call out challenge time came, we said, all right, what do we got? And Chavez said, well, I've got my truck, let's build it up. So we got really ambitious and built this massive triple turbo system for Triple the, like, turbo. The truck was all turbos. It was literally all turbos. So then um, we take it to the first competition, which was the drag race. Well, hold on, because we did R&D it, it a little a, bit yes. this much. Yeah. And our stupid decided to R&D it and had tons of problems at the R&D. We thought, no, well, let's just keep moving forward. We were running out of time. And so we were committed to the triple turbo idea. It was too late to go back in time. Can't go back. So what happened was we took it, I think, I can't remember if the first event was either the dyno competition or the, the drag race. Either way, every event that we took it to, the turbos wouldn't light. And they when would, we say it wouldn't light, the motor went. Yeah, would sit there and floor it, minutes. spray it with NOS, and the turbos were too big for the truck to be able to spin. And so just like yeah. every time we tried to, to spool the turbos, we would roast a transmission, roasting transmissions left and right. Just I think just we roasted blowing through three transmissions, yeah, blowing through transmissions, and the turbos I don't think ever actually lit. They never did. In fact, we did do a quarter mile in I, twenty I, seconds. I told Chavis when I. The truck, we couldn't get it to run out. We couldn't get the tuner out. I said, Chavis, I don't care. We didn't come out here to not do anything, so you have to go run it down the track. I made him run it, and he ran like a 28-second quarter mile second because the truck was like something. just putting and smoking down the track. It, it was humiliating. It got up to, to about 30, 40 miles an hour. It was the biggest disaster. We didn't make it even to the, the, the sled pole event because the, the truck was The reason this up. was so bad is because everybody, for some reason, thought because we had a TV show that we and it we was doing. tied to diesel that we knew what we were doing. <laughs> just in case any of you still thought that, we don't. We're, we're, not, bunch of, we're a bunch of friends that like to just build yeah. stuff and do crazy stuff. We're not diesel performance guys. No. Never have been and never claimed to be. Like, no. I've never built a sled pole or a drag race truck we because- We did get sued as one though. We did, yeah. We got sued as if we were the biggest diesel performance company in the world. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is, I don't really like sled pulling. I don't like dyno events and I don't love, uh, drag racing's okay. Drag racing's pretty um, cool. But the diesel performance side of it, we've never focused on it. We've never made it a focus. And that's why going into this event, we were all kind of blind. Chavis was the only one who had any experience in that world. And we just didn't have enough experience. We had a ton of resources. So we kept on buying parts and parts and parts and parts like crazy. I probably, that's another truck that I invested probably 
a hundred grand in and got zero return on it. We also we're forgetting the the hard part of the moment. Should we talk about the moment? Let's talk about the moment. So there's so, a moment where on on national TV, it's on the dyno. The truck is on the dyno, and we have less than five minutes to get the transmission lines that which had blown back together. And this is when you decided, what would Shamu do? Well, I I said no one can get up there. The dyno, dyno is dyno like, is like maybe five feet, five six feet, yeah, in, up. up up the air, and we had to pass some tools up to the guys working on, under the truck because we were in a hurry. But you should roll the clip. We're gonna just roll the clip so you can see, and it made me look like. A... I think we should we should do a little. You know where they put music to like somebody falling? Yeah. I think that song. Just... Uh -huh. That was one of the first times I got noticed yeah. on national TV. Yeah, actually humiliated. I was humiliated. So not only did we get our <laughs> completely kicked and not finish any of the call out challenge events. And all of us were embarrassed. You also got stuffed by the dino trailer and it said to come be Matumbo on you. And it was like, no, uh -uh, not today, not and in my it house. it looked horrible. Yeah. Which by the way, I can actually jump. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know. It's because you were trying to jump and reach under a truck I would at the jump same in. time. Yeah. Guys, I hope you enjoyed our pain because these 10 builds were very painful for us. And all in all, across this list of builds, it's probably close to a million dollars worth of mistakes that we've made. And this isn't all the mistakes we've made. We've made a lot of mistakes this in building just the top vehicles. 10. Yeah. But ultimately, you guys already know that if we have a top 10 worst, you know we're gonna have a top 10 list of best, favorite, most profitable, whatever. Those builds, that's coming soon. So stay tuned for that. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, hopefully you can learn from some of our mistakes. Like jumping on a dyno. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just say no. Uh -huh, this my all the girls don't be like